All right, I know all the concepts, I know everything, but all I need to know right now is how to actually get into a trade with a systematic entry strategy. If you have this question in this video, I'm gonna have you covered, because in today's lesson, we're gonna address how to actually enter trades, both as a swing and day trader, while covering timeframes, top-down analysis, and two systematic ways of entering the market. This is also the last video of the technical analysis video series, so you better cut all distractions right now, put down your phone, close your charts, right, get at a quiet place and make this time investment to carefully study the content, take notes and apply on your charts. And make sure that you're well up to date with the previous content we had in the previous videos, because if you're not, you're gonna get lost, right, because this series is designed to take you by the hand, step by step, build all the tools you need in order to be a profitable trader. Also, make sure to visit the link in the description as I have some more gifts for you down there. And without further ado, I think it's time to get into the video because again, entries is what everybody wants to learn. All right, let's learn how to enter into trades. So. What are the few important aspects of entries? You think it's all about getting that sniper entry, getting that high precision one pip stop loss, like going to extreme precision? Not really. It's all about actually being systematic and finding a way for you to enter the same trades over and over and over again without doubting too much and without being like, okay, should I enter here? Should I enter there? No, right? But in order to get there, you have to go through a couple of important parts of entries. The first one is timeframes. You have to give each time frame a task because without proper top-down analysis, you cannot get into high probability entry, right? You can't just go to the one minute and get a sniper entry without having any context at all. And this is why where a lot of people go wrong is that they go instead of first learning how to analyze market structure, trending markets, supply and demand, minor and major structure, right? They jump onto entries because they think if you get the entry criteria good, you're going to win. No, the entry is pretty much 20% of the uh, of it all, right? So again, what you have to do is you have to determine what is the aim of each time frame. So what are you going to be looking for on this time frame? What are you going to be looking on the second time frame? What are you going to be looking on the third time frame, right? So each time frame has a task and we're going to address this in this video. Then you have to refine your entry criteria to the fullest. So usually before you take a trade, you need to see a series of events before you engage in a trade. So how does that series of events look like? What do you want to see? Okay. Then of course you have to determine what is your required stop loss and take profit when it comes to your risk to reward. Okay. So like, uh, for example, for myself, if I take uh, my uh, conservative entries, which I'm about to teach you, I require a stop loss of five pips. Why? Because I want to be out of the trade when 20, when it moves 25 pips in profit. Okay. I don't want to be swinging it for 60 pips, relying on the market to give me 60 pips of movement while I can be out in just 25 and call it a day. Okay. So you need a checklist of steps that you need to take before you take every trade. And also I'm going to offering you a cheat sheet for that at the end. Okay. Next thing, refining your trade management to the fullest as well, because after you enter the trade, amazing. But what then? When do you go break even? Are you going to take partials? Are you going to move your stop loss in profit? Are you going to trail your trade? All right. What are you going to do after the trade? And this is also where a lot of people also go wrong is that you enter a trade and then you just pretty much screw it over. You either go break even, get stop loss, and then hit stake profit, or you either take like a big partial and then it continues to go into profit, or you can do a lot of things that can screw your overall performance. So again, the third part is what are you going to do when your trade is running into profit? Okay. And pretty much that's it. It's simple. The next thing you have to do is learning how to let go of the outcome of the trade and just pretty much think in probabilities and think long term. Because if you have the best entry strategy, but you have a flawed mindset, you do not allow the trade to play out to the fullest, you, you go break even too fast, you're fearful to take the trade according to your rules, uh, you close the trade when it's half of your stop loss, when you shouldn't close, right? You will still fail. Okay, so also it's all a mindset game. So let's address all of these aspects aspects one by one. Let's touch on trading timeframes. So how to understand timeframes and which ones to trade on. So first of all, what do timeframes mean? Okay, we've covered this in the previous lesson, but as I told you, price is always the same. And timeframes are just a different representation of price, right? Even if you're on the one yearly time frame, or if you go all the way to the one minute time frame, price is price. It has done the same, but just you get very little data 
on the on the one yearly, but on the one minute you get lots of data. You get candles every single minute. Okay, so price is always the same. What is different is the amount of information and depth of detail you see. And again, many traders fixate their minds on different time frames, thinking they're all different, right? So like the one hourly, it's different than the four hourly, or the 15 minute is, is better than the five minute. No, they are all the same. It's just the difference of the depth of detail. And again, you have to be systematic. As I told you, the market is fractal, so you can read the forward time frame, how it look, how the forward time frame looks like, even if you're on your 15-minute chart. I can very easily do that. Or you can be on the one-minute chart, but read how the 15-minute is looking like. Okay, this is a great exercise you can do. Like go to your one-minute time frame and try to draw how the 15-minute time frame is gonna look like. This takes experience, but there comes a time in which you can be just looking at one time frame, but also reading the hard time frames. Although I don't do this and I don't advise doing it because again, you need to look at the precise details on each time frame you're using. Again, going back to previous lessons, the higher time frames is where the money is. This is where the BFIs potentially operate and this is where we follow their footsteps. Because if you stay on the one minute, on the smallest time frame, you're always going to have big pushes, you're always going to have big impulses and big initiations, but again, they don't hold much value. While if you have a massive daily initiation, a massive daily push, well, somebody's driving the price on the daily to the upside. Well, it means that we're in an uptrend. Okay, so hard time frames will always prevail. So again, we simply want to follow the trend of the high time frame. And again, the quarterly is going to prevail over the weekly. The weekly is going to prevail over the daily, daily over 4H, 4H over 50 minute and 50 minute over 1 minute. So if you are bearish on the 4H and all of a sudden it starts massively going up, then of course you go to the daily and you see, ah, daily is bullish. If you are bullish on the daily, but it goes down, you go to the weekly, ah, weekly is bearish, right? Because usually hard time frames will prevail. And if you're on the higher time frames, there is less noise, which makes it easy to identify the main direction. So again, always have a higher time frame in your mix. Lower time frames are only for entries and refinements. Okay, you don't stay on the lower time frames. The majority of your time is spent on the higher time frames, like 4H or 50 minute. We're gonna go into that. Okay, but only once you know what price is doing on the higher time frame, then you drop to the lower time frame and search for your entry criteria. That's it. Again, I know a lot of strategies, they just stay, for example, on the five minute and scalp on the five minute. That's fine. If it works for you, great. But if you really want to build a true edge, you need hard time frames. And you do not drop to the lower time frames without having your hard time frame structure, zones, ranges, the 50% range, right? Your supply and demand zones and everything that I taught you so far. So let's explore time frames and pretty much I'm going to share with you which time frames I use and or just give you like a little bit of an overview of what you you could be using because again here I'm not teaching you like a very specific strategy I do this in my private program because it's pretty much how I trade but again I give you all the tools so you can actually go out there and build your strategy. First of all, major big hard time frame BFI direction. BFI is banks and financial institutions because again in our forex space, this is what they say. Hard time frame, this is where the banks trade. Do they really trade there? Probably not, right? But this is what we're told. Again, this is what, how we think. And again, it usually makes sense, okay? So those time frames are, again, the big guys, as we mentioned. That is pretty much your macro trend. And again, always be aware where price is in terms of the macro trend. Are there any important zones where currently price is, okay? I personally, I say it a lot on my weekly outlooks, but I do not like major time frames because they take way too much time to develop and me as a day trader slash scalper i don't need to know what is happening on the monthly time frame so i can take my trades on the one minute okay but if you are a swing trader major time frames absolutely essential okay to me the forward time frame is the absolute golden time frame so to me, this is the main time frame for direction. This is my major structure. This is where I identify my trend, my ranges, my PD, premium and discount, my major structural levels, my weak and strong highs and lows, my supply and demand zones, everything. Okay. So this is the best time hard. This is the best higher time frame for day traders. I am a day trader, so this is my hard time frame. On a daily basis, I do not go to the daily or to the weekly or to the monthly. All I check in the morning is the flower time frame. Okay, if you are a swing trader, you can, of course, use the daily as well. Okay, again, I'm, I'm giving you all the time frames so you tweak according to your approach and according to your style of trading. Then we need a minor structure time frame. 
And this is where you actually jump on the, on a lower time frame than your major time frame, right? To actually look at how the market is looking like within those legs. And this again, guys, we go back to market structure video. This is major minor structure. For hourly time frame, that's your major. 50 minute time frame, that's your minor. Okay, and you can be using anything in between the 15 and the 60 minute, the hourly time frame. All right, but again, you always link this towards your major time frame. So according to the four hourly time frame. And according to the following major structure, how does the minor structure look like? Because the minor structure is going to be in between the major one. And this is where we usually capitalize on continuations and pullback trades. Again, just to give you a very brief example with my little pen. On the time timeframe, we have a push and we're starting a pullback. Okay, so that is our higher low. That is our higher high. That's our major structure. There is our 50%. But then, of course, if you take all of this and you go to the 15 minute, which is our minor structure, right? We're gonna have like a massive uptrend. The market is gonna reach the top. It's gonna make a trend change. And right now we're starting to pull back. So I know that my 50% is here. I know that the market is already shifting structure. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be working with the minor structure in order to get me towards the major one. So I can take a couple of shorts until we tap 50%. And as we tap 50%, knowing we're bullish, I'm going to be looking for the market to align. And that is when I'm going to start taking longs. Okay. That is the aim of the minor time frame to give you more details on how your major time frame looks like and how to position yourself in a more, uh, how to say, like a specific yet refined entry. Okay. Because you don't just want to plot a buy on the farther right there and place your stop loss below, you want to be a little bit more precise. And we get this precision by having a minor time frame. Okay. And again, this is market structure video. Go back, watch it. Entry time frames is where, where you go to. If even if you really want to refine, that's when you go to the entry time frames. So after you determine your minor time frame positioning, okay, you have your entry zone and then price taps into your entry zone. That is when you drop lower if you wish to find an entry. And on that entry time frame, you have to be as detailed as possible regarding your rules because it can be all over the place, right? So again, same example, push and pull back on the folly time frame. We are bullish. The 50 minute is currently in a downtrend. And just recently, after tapping the 50%, it made a bullish trend change. There is our zone. Okay, so again, we define our entry zone. The price taps into the entry zone and it, it, it is that moment where we actually go to the one minute and again, you just take this little piece of information and it looks like a little uptrend. Then it goes like a downtrend. So you just wait for the market to align and then you go up. It's fractal. Everything repeats on the same time frame. And of course, we're going to jump into examples. We're all theory right now. So with that being said, what does this do? This builds your top down analysis process. So let me give you a, a, an example process. Weekly or daily, where are we there? Is it pushing or pulling back? Is it in premium or discount right now? What makes sense to trade? Where, where are the banks going? Are there any important levels to be aware of? This is the only thing I do on the weekly and daily. I don't draw structure there. I don't draw PD ranges. I don't uh, draw anything. I only need to know, okay, what is that time frame doing? So it maybe gives me a little bit of an edge. Okay, then forward time frame is where I spend the, well, not the majority, but this is where I get my hard time frame direction. So there, what is the trend and what is the market structure? Okay. So what is the trend? Is it an uptrend? Is it a downtrend? Is it a consolidation? Is it currently in a push phase towards the weak, a lower high, or is it in a pullback phase towards premium discount? What I mean by that, we have a push, we have a pullback. So is the market currently in a push phase towards the weak high? which is right there. So we're already having like a push or did the market push and it's currently correcting towards 50%. So those are usually the two phases you're going to have. You're either going to be in a push phase towards the high or you're either going to be in a pullback phase right towards making a potential high low formation. This is the main thing you need on the forward time frame. And of course, your major high low and your major high high because this pretty much determines your major range. Okay. Then 15 minute intraday price and zones. This is again where I spend the majority of my time every day. I pretty much stay on the 15 minute because I know how the four hour time frame looks like. So I, all, all I do is stay on the 15 minute. And this is where I draw my intraday, intraday price, intraday zones. And again, this is where I try to align with the four hour time frame for continuations or of course, look for the, uh, for the retracement trades. 
So for retracement trades, once again, you have to wait for a TC. So if you have an uptrend, the market starts pulling back, you need that TC on the top of the four hourly hard high, okay? Or if you want to get into continuation, you again need for the 50 minute to be aligned with the four hourly time frame. So then you can start looking for the continuation, okay? And of course, there are numerous details that we're going to be addressing right now. I'm going to be giving you plenty of examples. If you want to go into a continuation, okay, you usually have to wait for the four hourly time frame to tap 50% of the leg, okay? Or if you're trading into a retracement, you trade it only until the 50%. Because when it taps 50%, you usually know that the market pushes, has pulled back, 50% is tapped, you can go for a new hard high. So if you still look for shorts right there, it doesn't make a lot of sense. OK, and on the 50 minute, it's always very important that you draw your zones and your structure breaks and your trend changes. It's exactly the same thing you do on the foliage. You do it on the 50 minute, which is internal of the foliage. And then you have your entry time frame. So this is from the one to five minutes. You have first of all, you have your intraday zone, which is on the 50 minute. As the zone is tapped, that is when you drop to the one to the five minute time frame and you look for your entry rules. All right. So you're probably tired of theory. Let's get it to the end. Revisit all of this because it's a lot of notes. I want you to pause the video, study what I have said right there. It's a lesson. It's a lecture. You have to pause. You have to take notes, okay? Because that's a lot of things, but I always want to go through the examples because there it really makes sense. So how to trade from those supply and demand zones, okay? So you have your hourly trend. You have your 15-minute uh, uh, alignment. You have your 15-minute zone. What do you do? As I keep saying, this is a concept that I really want to ingrain into your head. The market has a fractal nature. So any setup you see on the monthly time frame will repeat on the one minute and the other way around. Okay, it's just a matter of preference which time frame you're going to be using. In this video, I'm going to give you two types of simple entries. Okay, so very simple. First is an aggressive entry from the zone. Okay, so you're going to need a little bit of a bigger stop loss, although there are ways to get the stop loss tighter. And the second one is the conservative entry, which is after making a, a which is pretty much waiting for a structure shift inside the supply and demand zone which utilizes the lower time frames. So here's how the aggressive entry looks like. You have a zone, you take the trade, stop loss below the zone, and then you target the new hard high. Or you wait you wait for exactly the same trade, but as we tap the zone, right? As we tap the zone right there, this is where you go to a lower time frame and you simply wait for an entry opportunity right there. So with that being said, let's actually jump into the entry strategies. The first strategy I want to teach you is the set and forget entry. This is perfect for swing traders. There are two things to remember. You always need to know what is your hard time frame doing. What is your full hourly time frame doing? Okay, so what is the major market direction? Because this is usually going to offer you the highest probability trade. And also, what is your middle time frame doing? Which illustrates your minor structure and your ranges within the major structure. Okay, so in order to get a high probability trade, you need to wait for the middle time frame to either align with the major or to be like in the pullback phase. So more examples coming in. For the SAF entries, set and forget, it's always preferred to stick to the higher time frame trend, so to trade pro trend and not go against it. Okay, so it's always good to take those entry at entries at extreme points on the higher time frame. So you're either going to be like at a higher high or a lower low or a higher low or a lower high. What I mean by this, right? So extreme point is when the market pushes, it pulls back and it makes the exactly the first trend change. That is an extreme point. Why? Because it's the hard high. The market pushes, it pulls back towards discount. There is discount, there is premium. It makes the trend change. That is an extreme point because it's a potential forward hard low. Okay. If you find yourself taking trades like this in the middle, you're probably going to get swept quite a few times. Okay, because the market, when it's in the middle right there, it's not at an extreme point of a higher low or at a higher high, it tends to kind of change a couple of times before it actually moves. So again, it's always good to trade at extreme points. Okay, for this uh, entry, it's also very important to not micromanage your stop loss. You place your stop loss, it's usually below or above the zone, you let it go. Okay, and always draw bigger zones. Don't refine too much your zones in order to get a tight stop loss, just keep it big. For me, I use my forward time frame as my hard time frame and then 50 minute as my middle time frame. Very, very, very simple. Let's look at some examples. So there is the daily. So again, I try to to be a little bit more um, 
kind of outside of what I do, because I want to offer you multiple opportunities to, to figure out your trading strategy. This is the daily. Okay, the daily. It broke structure down here. It broke structure up there. So we have a trend change. The market has pulled back below 50%. There is our major low. There is our major high. The market is below 50%. So again, if I ask you, what makes sense to be traded right now? Is it shorts or is it longs? Well, hopefully you say longs because we're bullish. Okay, going on to the next one. So there is that 50% on the daily. So again, so the quality time frame right now acts as our kind of minor time frame. Okay, so daily is bullish, but again, you can see the quality time frame is going bearish. So what we have to wait for is for the quality time frame to align. There is a lower low. We got a lower high. The market failed to break it right here. It pulled back again, and that is where we broke it. What caused the break? You track it back. There is the, 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 the point of the break. Okay, then what happens is the market goes on and aligns bullish on the foliage. Again, guys, wicks are breaks to me. Hopefully, you know this by now. We have quality break. Okay, so now the daily time frame is bullish. Quality time frame is bullish. So we have two confluences. There is your quality higher low. There is your quality higher high. Well, this is not a higher low because it's the low that actually caused the break. So this is an extreme point. Okay, so this is a higher low on the daily. And right now it's the first low as the quality time frame shifted structure. You draw your range. You wait for the market to the below 50%. There it is. And at this zone... That is where you decide, again, if you want to swing trade it, you can just simply take a trade from here, stop loss below, or what I'm going to show you right now is you can drop to even lower time frame and utilize the SAF entry, which is on the 50 minute. So there is your minor structure right now, okay? Quality higher low, quality higher high. The market dips below the 50%. What it's doing, it's going in a downtrend. What you have to wait for is right now for the 15 minute to also go bullish, and find the place from where it actually went bullish, okay? So we have a lower low right there. We have a lower high. The market actually created an MSS formation right there and broke the last lower high, okay? So this is a valid lower high right there. It broke it up. What caused the break? It's this zone. The market pulls back. Take the entry. Stop loss below right there. And there's your trade. Again, this one are cherry picked. So don't call me out. Yes, I went on and I picked those to be perfect because I can I want to show you a perfect example. Later, we're going to go on the charts and we're going to see that it doesn't work every single time. Okay, but for me, it's important for you to see the examples. Okay, so again, what you can do in this case is again, as I told you, there are ways to refine your, your zones. You can take like 25% of the zone, 50% of the zone. You can take it from the top. This I leave up to you to test out what works best. And again, your target is usually going to be the weak high. And that was on the foliage. Or you can also target a 15-minute week high. But again, if you're trading from a bullish daily, a, a, a bullish foliage, right? A bullish 15-minute time frame, you have a very big chance that the market is going to go up. Okay? So that's first example in which we used actually three time frames. Okay? Major time frame on the daily, bullish. Minor time frame on the hourly, bullish. And then 15-minute time frame, entry time frame. We waited for it to align and we took our trade. Okay. Next example. Again, daily time frame. So this is really swing trading right there. Daily time frame is bearish. Okay. There is our last break of structure. What caused the break? It's this range high, range low. The market just kissed 50%. So what makes sense right now to be traded? Is it longs? Is it shorts in terms of the daily? Well, hopefully you say shorts because it's bearish buys. Let's see how the quality time frame looks like. Oh, well. Quality time frame is still bullish. It got all of this shitty price action right there, all of this range. Okay, but what is the current, what is the current range? Well, the market. So again, we're not gonna go into market structure details. Okay, so you should be doing this by now, following the structure. Okay, from the previous video, this is the higher low, this is the higher high. Where is the fifty percent? Right there. Where is the demand? Right here. So technically, you can see the daily is bearish right now, but the quality time frame is bullish. But where are we right now? We are at the higher high. So what we could expect happening is to, for the market to pull back and drive us into 50%. So what are we going to do right here is we're going to take a counter trend trade because right now the 40 time frame still hasn't aligned. Can you do that? Yes. If you are, remember a very important point from the theory before, if you are at extreme point, if you are somewhere right there in the middle, you don't do this. You only do this at higher highs or at lower lows or right at higher lows, like here. 
In this case, we have a higher high. Jumping on the 15 minute, there it is. So we had the Asian high, uh, kind of chopped for a little bit right there. Again, the 15 minute was bullish from here, breaking structure up. That was our demand. The market responded, but then what it ended up doing, trend change. So right now we know that this was our four hourly higher high. How do we know that a higher high is formed when you have a 15 minute trend change? The trend changes, right? We have our range supply. Again, you, you pick what to choose. Do you want to take this? Do you want to take this? Do you want to take this? Or do you want to take even this? It's up to you, right? I want you to go and back this and figure out your zones, okay? I just picked like this overall range, which is the last kind of buy, range, initiation outside. And this is where I'm going to be setting my short order. Guess what? The market didn't tap. Do we care? Not really. Okay, what the market does, it continues to go down. But as you can see right here, it's just tap the 50%. So you should know that your probability of getting a short trade right now decreases. But let's not forget that the daily is bearish. So eventually, the flower is going to go from bullish to bearish. And again, this is why I really love the 15-minute the time frame because that's the first time frame that is actually going to show you when this happens. So what we have... We have again base supply going back to supply and demand lessons. We have a valid range right there. The 15 minute broke structure created the base supply. Can we trade from this? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Market comes back, retests. Of course, your stop loss should always go above the high, right? You don't place it here, you don't place it anywhere apart from the high. And you do not micromanage. What happens later? Well, let me delete my tools right there. The market goes on and makes another structure break. We track it back. What caused the break? This is the high. So this is our strong high right now. Our trade is running into profit. We have a new strong high. Can we keep shorting? Absolutely. We can short until we are wrong. There is our supply. Stop loss above. Let's see what happens. The market pulls back. Where is my mouse? It's disappeared. All right, there it is. So the market pulls back. Taps inside the, the, the lower high, stop loss above, and just dumps. So we hit 4R on the first trade. We hit 4R on the second trade. Okay, we had a new break of structure. What caused it? It's this. Can we set a new order here? Absolutely. But again, the market does not pull back. A new break of structure. What caused the break? It's this. We set a new order. The market doesn't come back. New break of structure here. This is what caused it. Maybe you get in right there. And you can see it just continues to roll down. So we were bearish on the daily. That was our major time frame direction. Okay, but on, and, and for example, on the 15 minute right there, we just kept getting short. And this is pretty much the set and forget approach. We're going to go into the live charts later and get some more examples. So hopefully it makes sense. If you have any questions, the comments are open below. The precision entry. I know you're all here for this. So let's have a look. First, again, hard time frame major market direction is it bullish is it bearish middle time frame what is the minor structure within the major structure what is currently happening so again let's not forget the time frame is right there 15 minute is right there but this time we also have a lower entry time frame that gives us an entry criteria and signals so again to me this is the one minute time frame, although oftentimes I regret using the one minute because it could be uh, noisy, it could give you a couple of stop losses, but you also have to be fine with that. What do you need for precision entries? You need to have mastery over your higher and midter time frames because you only go to the lower time frames after those two are ready. You need to have precise and strict rules so that you know exactly what you're looking for on the lower time frames. So don't just go out, go there without knowing what you're going to be looking for. You have to be patient and wait for your strict rules to play out. Because if you go FOMO and you don't wait for your rules to play out, you're going to take losses. Okay? And of course, the biggest drawdown of this one is you have time, you need time to stay on the charts and monitor it on the lower time frame. Because again, when you drop to the one minute, it can take 30 minutes until your setup comes on. And you have to be there because it only costs you one minute to miss the trade. And that's the biggest drawdown of trading on the lower time frames. Okay? The good thing is that for precision entries, we utilize exactly the same steps as the set and forget entry. But again, once we have a tap of a supply and demand zone on the 15 minute, that is where we drop even lower. And then we wait for a series of events to occur. What are those? Let's have a look. Here are the rules. Okay, so first we have our, we have our set and forget entry criteria fulfilled. So we have our flowery trend, check. We have our 15 minute zone, check. We have our 15 minute PD range, check. Always good, okay? Then as this zone is tapped, 
That is when we drop to the lower time frame, which for me is the one minute time frame. We wait for the for our liquidity point to be taken. So there is a series of events. Five things to happen before we take a trade. First, trend. Second, my, my, minor structure, minor structure POI and range. Good, everything is met. Lower time frame. Okay, you drop as the zone taps, lower time frame. What do you look for there? You wait for a liquidity point to be grabbed. Again, liquidity lessons. This pretty much you do this in order to, to trick early buyers and sellers, get their stop loss, so then usually your trade gets a much bigger probability. You can remove this on, on uh, from your rules, right? But again, you might take one or two stop losses before you get the winner. So you better wait for some sort of a liquidity grab before you take the trade. Then what you simply wait, trend change. And you know how trend change works because it works on absolutely every single time frame. So what you're looking for here is for your one minute, the lower time frame to align with the 50 minute. Very simple. We did this exactly this with the SAF entry. Right now we're going to be doing with, with this. The only difference here is that we also look for a liquidity grab. Okay. And then what we have to find out is, okay, what is the supply and demand zone that calls the one minute TC? And we enter from there and we place a safe stop loss. So if you want to visualize this again, quality time frame, broke structure, major high low, major high high, 50%. What do we look for is we wait for the market to pull back below 50% in order to get a higher probability long trade. Okay, then as soon as it's here, we drop to the 50 minute. The 50 minute is going to be bearish because if you observe this leg right there, the 50 minute is going to be bearish. What we wait for is for the 50 minute to align with the 4H. How do we know that it aligns? Trend change. There's our trend change. Again, price is fractal. We have a 50% range right there. We also have a 50% range on the 50 minute. You can definitely do that. The market pulls back below 50%. It taps into the higher time frame demand. And again, for your SAF entry, you just enter from here, stop loss below. Easy. But if you want to do the precision entry, you drop to a lower time frame. Okay. And what you wait for on the lower time frame is again for that same alignment. But the only difference, as I keep saying, is that you can wait for a liquidity grab. So the market taps into your zone creates a flat lows, creates equal lows, creates maybe a fake TC, creates a little bit of a range, manipulates it. Okay, so wait for this. Don't rush to enter in the first signal because it's usually on the lower time frame, there is a lot of noise. While on the 15 minute, if you just enter from here, it can come in, do all this BS, and then it's going to go. But your stop loss is safe. But if you go in on the one minute right there and you just enter from here, stop loss below, you're going to get stopped. Right, so again, what you wait for is first liquidity grab, Train change, you find what caused the train change, you enter from there, stop loss below. Easy. All right, it's very, very, very easy. Let's have a look at some examples. There it is. So here we're on the 4H. That's US 30 on the 4H. Okay, so we have a break of structure. Um, yeah, probably we had one right there. So then we have a break of structure here. Bullish, where is the low? Right there, where is the high? Right there. Right? So here we can be looking to short. On the 50 minute, but right now we're focused on pro trend. We're focused on longs. Okay, we are below the 50%, so we are potentially about to make a new higher low formation for us to head into the highs and take out the hourly weak high. Dropping onto the 50 minute. Okay, the 50 minute was bearish, 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 bearish. Right, broke structure down, respected. Can you be taking shorts here? Yes. As we saw in the previous example, right? As long as the 50 minute goes down, you can be taking shorts. I mean, there, there is a break of structure, there is your zone. Take it, set and forget, or even drop to the one minute to look for your short. But eventually what happens is the market consolidates for a little bit right there and then massively expands. Okay, then again, what happens right now is that the forward time frame was bullish and right now the 50 minute time frame was bullish. If you want to make this clear, I used to, on, the, on here in my top right corner, I used to write these things down. Okay, forward bullish, 50 minute bearish. So what I had to wait for is for that 50 minute to align with the 4H. You can definitely do that, okay? So what we have right now is a massive alignment. So what we have to wait for right now is for our zone to tap. Simple. You don't trade without having a zone. You don't trade from the middle. There it is. The market comes back, taps into our zone. So again, you can either do a set and forget approach right here and just enter from right there. No stop loss below. But in this case, we're going to drop to a lower time frame and see what we can do right there. There it is. So again, you have to wait for some sort of liquidity. Liquidity was even forming right there. You see this trend line? The market massively smashed it, right? But again, we look at structure. We don't look at trend lines. We look at structure. The market broke here. 
Yes, that was the major high low formation, but again, this is a high high. You don't want a long right there. Train change, can you short? Yes, right? But this is the one minute, you don't do this. The market came all the way down right here. And as it tapped the zone, it made a TC. So again, there are multiple sorts of liquidity. Okay, we covered a lot of them. In this case, what we have is not a liquidity within here, but liquidity happened right there. Because again, here you can see the market shifts bearish. All of this is trendline liquidity. All of this is also liquidity. The market comes in, starts making like a fake TC right there. So you can see it taps, it makes a fake internal TC, right? But again, you ask the question, what is the, the, the supply and demand zone that actually caused the first TC? There is our first TC. There's the demand zone that caused it. So you want to trade from this one. You don't want to do all of that middle thing right there. Again, you trade from the extremes. Remember, going back to a previous lesson. You take the trade from there and you get 5R at a potential like liquidity point. Or you can swing it to the fences. I don't know what happens, right? Let's see. Boom. There's your weak high. So again, you also have to think of, okay, what is my trade management? How am I going to approach this? Okay, but again, this is a great example of uh, liquidity not being perfect. But again, if you have your rules, if you know that the 50 minute is bullish, you wait for the one minute to align, you ask the question, what caused the one minute to align? And this is where you take your trade. Okay, and again, guys, saying it again, those are cherry picked. Yes, I went on the charts, I uh, back test, and I found examples that look good, so I can show you good examples. Okay, another trade, EU time, EU time frame, Euro USD, forty time frame, bearish, right? So again, you can see where's my mouse? Ah, it keeps disappearing. There's break of structure down. Okay, what caused it? This the market pulls back, shorts right there. Another break of structure. What caused it? Uh, it's this. In this case, you can see I forgot to mark it right there. We shifted bullish for a little while. So here we shifted bullish. Eventually, we shifted bearish. Okay. What caused this break is this guy. Major high, major, high, major low. Pulled back above 50%. What does it make sense to be traded right now? Shorts. Why? Because we're bearish. So what we have to be looking for right now is for the 50 minute to go short. Okay. But there is a big but. I have a rule in my community, so I'm going to share something with you that is, uh, I usually keep it secret. As long as the 50 minute goes, you go with the 50 minute until you're wrong. Why? Because in this case, I've seen it often times, the market decides to actually shift the trend. Maybe there is a daily demand zone right there and the market is going to turn bullish on the daily. So what the 50 minute does, bullish, 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 and then it breaks the high. Okay. And you're like, ah, well, Farley was bearish. Why did we turn bullish? Well, because of daily. And that is why I told you the lower time frames are always going to trump. So look at this. Great example. The market made this lower low. It went on and made a trend change. What caused the trend change? It's this. Can you take a long here? Absolutely, you can smash it. Another break of structure. What caused this break of structure? This. Can you take a long from here? Absolutely, but your stop loss is a bit big. Another break of structure. What caused this break of structure? It's this. Can you take a long here? Uh, yes, but it's Asia, so you don't take it because you can get swept, okay? And then, of course, this was the high. This was the low. All of this is internal. If you're just careful to look at the candles, right, that's the highest point. That's the lowest point. All of this is internal. You make a lot of mistakes saying, ah, trend change. Oh, structure break. No, that's internal. The market taps in, goes on, and breaks another structure break. So what you really see right now is that the 50 minute is just beautifully bullish. So to me, as long as the 50 minute is bullish, I go long. This is exactly where we broke the 50 minute high. What caused the break? It's this little zone. Retest it. Broke up again. What caused this break? It's this zone. Right? So hard hello demand. We're retesting that zone. You can take a set and forget approach. Play stop loss below. Or you can go to the one minute. Let's see how it looks like. There it is, okay? So that's the 50 minute break, the market pulls back. So let's first see, okay, so we tap into the zone. Do we take liquidity? Yeah, what's this? So do you remember from the liquidity lesson? What is this? It's structured liquidity. It's, it's fake supply and demand. Because again, people are gonna be looking to take a long from here and you can see at the reaction, there were people longing from here. Guess where their stop loss was? Right there and look at how the market massively takes everything. What about this? This is also a supply and demand zone. And this is why I told you guys, do not refine. Don't look too much on the lower time frames and try to pick that sniper entry because it's not about getting a sniper entry. It's about entering at the right place. Guess what? 
there were buys entering from there. Look at the reaction. They got in, they got in even here. Where is their stop loss? Below this low. Look where the market goes. And then what it does later is it just aligns bullish. And that is when we strike after the liquidity grab. There is our trend change. Stop loss is 3.4 pips. For me, if it's below 5 pips, I smash the trade. Okay. And the result, TP in 3 minutes. Why did it go so fast? Is because it stopped out these traders and it also stopped out these traders. And when everybody stop, stopped out, that is when it goes. And this is why I believe you have to be looking for always for liquidity gaps. So hopefully this makes sense. It's very, very, very simple. What I want to show you right now, it's something amazing that I'm going to be sharing with you. This is a, a roadmap, right? This is a flow chart. So let me try to break this down, okay? I actually advise to, to do this on your own. So this is just an example, okay? This is what I use. I have tweaked it a little bit towards what I teach you. For my community members, it, it's, it's way different than that. But let me give you like a little breakdown. So this is where the major time frame is. You see, this is where we start, okay? If the four-hour time frame is bullish, you go on the left. If the four-hour time frame is bearish, you go on the right. Let's say it's bullish. Okay, so what is it doing? What is the current face of the market? Is it pushing towards a weak high, which looks like this, right? It's pushing towards a weak high, or is it pulling back into 50%, which looks like this. We're still in a pullback, okay? So depending on this, then you flow. Okay, so then, cool, it's this face. So I drop to the 50 minute. What do I do on the 50 minute? Well, if it's pushing towards the weak high, you want to go long. So you find the last clear 50-minute zone that calls the, uh, a structure break, okay? And, of course, you've got to wait for liquidity. That's it. Simple. So th this one is very simple. All you need to do in this case is just go long until that quality time frame is taken. What about this guy? So say that the market is pulling back right here. So then you have two things that could happen. Is the market still kind of pulling back into 50%, but it's still, uh, I mean, above premium? So I see it's it's above, it's bigger than 50%. Is this right? Well, well, yeah, it's technically in premium. In order for us to buy, this is premium. This is discount. We need the market to get into discount. So if it's above 50%, then you find what calls the 50-minute TC and you trade this as long as you are not in 50%. So say here, we got the TC and even structure breaks, you can take those shorts until the 50%. That is this, this case. If the 50 minutes, I mean, if the four hour time frame has right now tapped the 50%, right? So it's if, if it's at the 50% on the foage, then you wait for a 50 minute TC at higher time frame demand. So again, on the four hour time frame, you can have demand right there. The market is usually cap, tap into this demand and the 50 minute is going to align. So when the 50 minute aligns, when it's below the 50%, you go to this profile right there. Okay, because right now we're aligned. So we want to go again towards the weak high. So hopefully it makes sense. Study this chart. I'm going to go in examples right now, but I'm going to share this with you. You can play with it. You can do your own. Okay. And again, zone requirements in order to have a zone, it must break structure strongly with momentum, leave some imbalance. It needs to be an engulfing candle. Okay. So there needs to be a big engulfing candle. If there is not on the 15 minute, you go to the 25 minute to the 30 minute. And of course you would like to see some sort of a manipulation taking liquidity like a range, took liquidity, and then initiated. Those are the most powerful supply and demand zones. And there are your entry rules. Identify the profile. Where are you in terms of your macro trend? And where are you in terms of your minor trend right there? The 50 minute. Where is your supply and demand zone retest? So again, on the 50 minute, where is your zone? Okay, and then of course, you can do the SAF entry, the set and forget. Enter from this zone with a safe stop loss. Or you can go to the precision entry. So you wait for a liquidity grab. You wait for a trend change and then you execute and manage the trade. There is your cheat sheet. Again, link in the description. I'm going to send this to you, right? So with that being said, there are additional entry models, right? This is not all. This is very simple and I want you to go in your chart and try to figure it out. I have worked really hard uh, for my personal trading to find out like the best way to enter trades, the best way to also further capitalize on trades. Uh, if you get an initial entry, then we have like two Three types of entries, aggressive one, which is our swing trading strategy. We have the TC entry and then we have the, the continuation entry. So we have three entry models that allow us to continuously kind of get into trade and scale into trade while keeping it extremely systematic. So again, if you want to learn absolutely everything, the Fanatic way, of course, is the, is the way to go, right? 
So right now I want to jump on a chart. Let's jump on a chart. Practice also with the with the tool that I'm gonna give you and have a look at how you can actually practice getting into trades. All right, welcome to the charts. As you can see, we have our flow chart right there. So I'm just gonna give you an example. I'm gonna try to keep it two examples only, so we can keep the video short while I will try to explain to you what I mean. Okay. Let me just share with you an example. We are actually in a trade right now. Okay. So first of all, let's of course do our top-down analysis. Uh, if you know here we shifted bearish right so the range so we yeah we can have definitely uh, this short right there and then we can have other short right now the market then broke structure down right so the market was bearish but then uh, it was um, yesterday we came on and we actually shifted the structure up and right now we have a brand new structure here well forex.com uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. This is also break structure up happening right there. So currently, this is our higher low formation. So let me first talk about the trade we are right now, and then we're gonna jump onto two more examples. Okay, I'm gonna start talking a lot right now, so probably this video is gonna go three hours. <laughs> Joking. So what do we have? We have a push. Okay, so we have a push phase. If I just zoom in while keeping this thing right there, so we have a push phase. Right, the market made a new higher high. This is our higher low that caused the break of the higher high. The market made a high right there. So what do we want to see right now is for the market to start pulling back below 50%. Okay, so again, what are we? Fowley, bullish. Where are we? Pull back into 50%. So now we drop to the 50 minute. Okay, let's bring this back up right there. Man, this one, why can't it stay just in one place? Can I lock it or somehow? Uh, yeah, okay, doesn't matter. I'm going to keep dragging it with me. So again, you can see the market kind of made a new higher high, okay? And the little example here is that it kind of came in and tapped the 50% and then the short occurred a little bit later, okay? So again, attention to details. You could have definitely skipped the short, okay? But let's just stick to that, okay? The market is right now bullish. It's at a higher high. How do you know that higher high is formed? When you have a trend change. This is exactly when the trend change occurs. So right now we are at this right now. Okay, the market is in premium. We want to get the market into discount in order to get a long. So what we want to do is we trade into the 50%, which is counter trend. Okay, so now 50 minute, what caused the trend change? It's this, right? In this case, we took uh, we took a slightly bigger zone like that. I think it's on another time frame. The market pushed, pulls back into the zone. Two things you can do, set and forget. Take your trade from there. Stop loss above, of course, a little bit bigger, and you ride it down towards like the 50%, which can give you around 2 hour. Because that is one of the trades you can take. What we did is we dropped to the one minute, and we did the precision entry. The market comes in, grabs liquidity on the left, right, and what it does, so what we have to wait for right now is for the one minute to align. The one minute made a higher high, the one minute made a lower low, train changed down, the market came in, gave us an entry, stop loss above, Four pips and uh, it's a uh, very choppy because we have a CPI uh, there right now, but it, it, it got us to 3R, right? So there is a trade. Very, 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 very simple. That's it. And this is again a counter trend trade. So you can decide to risk if you wish a little bit less, but you can see in just two minutes, we frame the trade. For our time frame, higher high. 50 minute time frame, trend change down. So we have actually the confluence. We don't try to keep longing as the market is making the highs. Uh, sorry, to, to keep shorting, catching the top, we wait for the market to show us when the top is formed, and that is when we get into the trade. So let's see if this one is actually going to go on and take out the low. I don't think so, because we have CPI, so it's probably going to do this, and then it's going to do some mad stuff. So there is one trade. Let me show you another trade. Can I just... Okay, nice. I'm going to keep copy-pasting it. So let me show you right here, exactly right there. If you ask the question... The Fowley was bull uh, bearish. Why did it turn bullish? Let's check out the daily. What is the daily doing? How to break a structure up here. What do we have right there? Demand. So what is the daily doing? It's bullish. So right, we were bearish right there. The market made a massive push to the downside. Eventually ended up taking it out. Why? Check your higher time frame. Okay. At this precise point right here, what we could have done. Okay, well... The quality time frame right now is bearish. We drop our range. Okay, so what are we right now? Let me just put this back up. Okay. So the quality is bearish. We go on to the right. We're pull and we are right now pulling back towards the 50%. Okay, so we are still below discount. So we want to get the market into premium. 
so that we can start shorting the market. So what we can do is we can counter trade, trading into the 50%. So that is currently our situation. When do we know that a lower low is formed? Again, when we have a trend change. So again, according to your rules, according to me, the trend change occurred exactly right there. What caused the trend change? It is zone. Can you take a trade here? Absolutely, yes. Do you do the set and forget approach? Like this, and then target like the 50%, which in this case gave you a 3R. And if you decide to, re to leave a runner, oh, you're looking pretty good, right? You're looking pretty good, right? Or we can jump to the one minute. Let's see if we actually got something on the one minute. <clears throat> Hell yes, we did, right? The market comes in, flat lows, took them out. Lower high, flat lows, took them out. This is exactly where we shifted bullish on the, on, on the one minute. What caused the shift to bullish? Right here. There's your trade precision entry. Stop loss below. I mean, this stop loss is ridiculous, right? Two pips. And uh, yeah, then you can target like you can see the 15 minute high gives you 4R. And if you go towards the 50%, it gives you 17R. But this trade for me, 6 o'clock, I don't trade at 6, man. Yeah, well, again, it's according to your style. If you trade New York session, there is your trade. It literally caught the bottom after a 15 minute trade change. Set and forget approach, precision entry, everything was there with liquidity grab as well. Okay. Another example, early this week. Uh, so if I just do this just before it happened. Okay. So again, this is hindsight, guys. Okay. I, I'm just to remember those examples. I want to show you examples. Okay. I take losses. My win rate is 40 to 45%. So again, what I show you works 45% of the times. So again, don't think that it's 100%, please. I'm not one of those guys to pretend like, oh, this is what you have to do. There is our high, there is our low, okay? So again, back into structure, high, low, should be red, but again, where is our 50%? Boom. So where is the market? So you open your chart, seven o'clock, okay? You open your, your two, where is the market? What is it doing? Bearish, cool, there we are. Are we, what are we doing right now? Well, we are currently at 50% above 50%. So what we have to be looking for is for the 15 minute T, uh, for a 15 minute TC to align bearish so then we can jump into this phase. Okay? So let's see what we do. We drop to the 15 minute time frame. In this precise case, you have to be master at market structure, okay? This is exactly where we broke the 15 minute low. What caused the break of the 15 minute low? Again, you can you can take it in numerous ways. You can do this for me, it was actually this little guy right there. So the market broke. And this to me, again, I was looking at this. I didn't take this trade, by the way, guys, because it was Monday, bank holiday. So I did not trade. But there was a perfect example of a setup. Okay. So in this case, we also have liquidity. I mean, uh, this is liquidity high, an old high. This is liquidity high, right? So where, what does the market do? Bank comes in and smashes it. Why? Because there are people trying to short from here, which is internal structure. Remember? So... Major folly high, major folly low. On the 50 minute, you also have to do the same. Major 50 minute high, major 50 minute low. Everything inside, you don't trade. The only thing you care about is how do I get a short? Could we have gotten short right there? Absolutely. Here, absolutely, if you get your entry set up. Okay? But on the next day, we come in right there. Asian high is taken, liquidity is taken. We drop to the one minute. So the one minute takes lots of liquidity right now. So what we have to wait for is for the one minute to align. Okay? Technically, the one minute aligns right here. You can also take this. Let's see what happens. Boom. The one minute aligned. It broke all structure. So it's exactly this time where the one minute has aligned after a liquidity grab. So you just take your trade, right? Nowadays, I don't even draw zones on the one minute because all I need to see is that I have a, a safe stop loss. Like in this case, I can be entering like even from here with a five pips. Or if I wish a little bit tighter, I can be entering from here. Let's just say like, I don't know, four pips or something conservative. What can you target? Well, first of all, you can target a 15 minute low, where in this case it's this, or you can just target. Again, guys, targets are up to you. I always advise 3R, 4R, 5R. If you can get this, you're absolutely golden. Don't swing to the fences. Okay. So let's do like a regular, like in this case, we're trading with the trend. So we can do 4R. And uh, yeah, again, it was bank holiday. The market reacted. It came, uh, I think it came one more time. Yeah, it came one more time, right? But you can see the strong high remains intact. Okay, and yeah, eventually, if I just jump uh, to another time frame, 
eventually we massively dropped. So it turned into actually this one turned into a massive trade lower. Okay. So hopefully you get the you, you get the, the mindset, you get actually how it works, right? It just works every single time. Again, if I even if I again right here, you can see here, we had uh there was a slight here we had this massive push lower that let's say caused the break of structure down. So what are we doing? We draw the range. Okay, say we're say we're right there. The market is just making a new lower low. We usually like wait for the first bullish candle, but again, we're on the 50 minute because the 50 minute is gonna give us a trend change. So let's jump on the 50 minute. Okay. Uh the 50 minute aligned. Yeah, I remember this day. It aligned right here, broke down, broke up. So can you take a set and forget approach here? Absolutely. To me, it was a little bit too early. And then you can see the market starts rolling. You usually want to trade it towards the 50%. Okay. Boom. The market is above 50%. So here you have guys two choices. If we are at 50%, so we're in this case, we're bearish, uh, pull back into 50, we're at 50, so you either have to wait for a 50-minute TC to align down, so you can go pro-trend with the bearish one, or as I told you, you follow 50-minute until you're wrong, okay? 50-minute broke here, boom. 50-minute broke here, boom, right? This one did not get retested. Uh, let's see if this one is going to get retested. Nope, but again, what we did is we broke another one. What caused this break? It's this. Okay, so there is your setup. You keep following the trend. Set and forget approach. Boom. Stop loss below. Six pip stop loss. Again, targeting 3R because for swing trades, you don't want to target way too much. Same thing. You can drop on the one minute. Okay. What do we have here? Let me just get this out of the way for a little bit. What do we have here? Well, again, we have that same thing, right? We have lots of zones right there that are potentially going to get taken. Let's see if they get taken, actually. Boom. Okay, so again, people look to enter from there. They enter from here. Stop loss is below. They get taken. So what are we looking for right now is for the one minute to align. There's your alignment. What's the stop loss? Three pips. Let's just smash the trade. Go for three R. Like in this case, uh, for a tight stop loss, I usually do four R. And we get another stop loss, right? So that's cool. Okay, amazing example. Very good. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So we got a stop loss, right? The market broke down. Then uh, we look for the market to break up. Oh, yeah. Oh, guys, I remember this trade. So, so this is the trade. I took two stop losses last week on Monday. Why? Because I was I didn't play the set and forget approach. I played the one minute approach. So uh, this is where... So let me see. Oh, yeah, so this is where we aligned. And yeah, then the second trade was right here. So then I think here I made a mistake as well. Did I place a tight stop loss? I don't remember. But again, we aligned here again. So even if you take a stop loss, you keep waiting. Because as long as your zone is intact, if you get another trend change, you can still enter into the trade. Right? And uh, yeah, I think eventually we tapped. So I think, yeah, pretty much the second trade I took was from here. But I took two stop loss on this one. So maybe I took even a stop loss here. I don't really remember what I did. But again, you just wait for it. You wait for the trend change. Oh, no, 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 no. I took a break even. I took a break even here because I was a scared bastard. Yeah. But then again, as you can see, we're running into the highs. And the swing trade is looking way better. Okay. So pretty much those are the chart examples. Make sure to actually go on and utilize this chart. I'm going to share this with you uh, via email. I'm going to send it to you. So make sure to click in the description. So right now, let's go and wrap it up. All right, we've come all the way until the end. So this is the end of the four video series, which actually turned five. So after this, do you feel a better trader? Type in the comments below if you do feel like a better trader. What were your main insights from all the videos? What did you learn? And are you already having success? By now, you should have built your risk management plan. First video, understood basic and advanced market structure. Second video, supply and demand concepts and how to use them. Third, liquidity. Fourth, and right now, master two very simple entry systems on this video. So again, this is a great foundation. I mean, I've really went ahead and given you a lot of tools, a lot of stuff, a lot of concepts that really work amazing. Okay, so what right now, what I advise you to do, go back to video one and cover them again. Because again, just by watching a single video once, it's not going to make you understand the concepts if you don't see them every single day. So this is why in the community, we're here showing up every single day. And pretty much if you follow us for like for one month inside the community, uh, you pretty much become masters of the concepts. 
okay? So focus on the technical videos especially, you don't need to watch the training plan videos three times, right? So focus on the technical videos, which are like all the videos after the training plan. Take notes, study, find examples, backtest, see how it works, figure out how it works for you, figure out your time frames, figure out everything. Okay, and then of course, try to build the strategy section of your trading plan. Because again, first, we did risk and money management, we did monetary goals, we did your why, we did everything. But then the second part of your plan is to have a strategy in place. Again, higher time frames, minor time frames, entry time frames, entry strategy, trade management, everything. Right? So, that's it. We're wrapping it up. So again, what would you like to see further? We wrapped up the series. Hopefully you found lots of value with it. Well, throughout this series, we actually hit 100,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane, right? I want to keep providing. So what would you like to see? Do you have any content ideas? Just let me know, okay? I love you all. Thank you for all the support. I give all of this knowledge uh, to actually help you get a better trader, learn what actually works in the market and avoid all the BS that is out there. So without said, Thank you so much once again, and I'll talk to you on my next videos. Hopefully, you're going to crush the markets with all these concepts. And if you have any questions, you always know where to find me. The best place is via email at support at tradingfanatic.com. Of course, leave a comment. I'm always there to answer. And uh, yeah, talk to you soon.